This is the Scott and Gervais show, which was named by Gervais. Oh. <laughs> Actually make it that on the YouTube channel, too. Actually make it that. Yeah. Did you, did you have one that you like more between the Mr. Sun and the Viagra commercial? I think the Mr. Sun. Yeah. Yeah, like just from beginning to end, it was like simultaneously ri like ridiculous, but also very fun. Yeah, and that's like my we, favorite type of comedy. We 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 had like the like it was it was literally like ridiculous, like how we came up with it. We were like sitting down with this balloon <laughs> that uh, John uh, John's uh, son's balloon. Um, and we're like, yo, this look like this balloon looks creepy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, this this balloon looks creepy as fuck. There's probably something we can do with it, and how like sober you, as hell, we just shot it. Like, how long did you work on it? Uh, we worked on it like like by the time we were done editing and shit, it was like three in the morning. Well, it's not too bad. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, by the time we were done editing, it was like three in the morning. We started shooting probably at like eleven. So we got this shit out pretty like like fast. Which one did you like more? Mr. Sun. But people are on this Viagra shit hard. Like <laughs> like when I like when I shared the <laughs> not to phrase it like that. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> um, have you seen Loki? Yes. What did you think of it? I honestly think from the first episode alone, what they're doing with it, this is, I think this is probably going to beat WandaVision and Falcon and Winter Soldier. For me, I think it's going to outdo it because I love like, they they getting into a whole different thing here with like the multiverse shit and all of that. Falcon and Winter Soldier was really good, um, but I feel like we got a lot of the same from that. Mm -hmm. And Wandavision was different, but I feel like Loki is going to take it to like another level, and I'm loving it. I'm 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 loving it so far. And I didn't like yo. Owen Wilson is so good. He, he's a great actor. And like everyone forgets <laughs> it because he's in like Wedding Crashers, but he's a, he's an actually good dramatic actor. Yeah. I really enjoyed Owen Wilson in that first episode. I really liked it too. Like thinking of the other shows with like Falcon and the Winter Soldier from like the first episode, you knew where it was gonna, like going to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like with Maybe not all of the details, but you were like, okay, he's going to end up there. This person's going to In general, up. yeah. 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 With WandaVision, it started off promising. Mm -hmm. And then I think, like, it just didn't make the landing. In the end, it didn't, right? I was expecting... It's like it I went for safety instead of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's so much they could have did with that. Did I? I still enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. They ended up they like they started doing something really different, and like you said, in the end they went for safety. They did what they always kind of do, like they you know, they stuck with the Marvel formula in the end. Um. With that being said, I really do feel like with WandaVision, uh, they made both Scarlet Witch and Vision like way more interesting yeah I, I just wish i just wish they ended up doing something like crazy in the end which they could have yeah. did and they just they didn't it made me like loki more as a character yeah because now, now there's like you like i always assumed that there were more layers to the character but now he's like you're seeing it mm-hmm you know, you're actually seeing it. Like him, like coming face to face with his own death, the death of his parents and stuff like that. Like, it's like, it's legit a thing now. It's, you know, there's, there's really layers to it. So 
I've been, I've definitely been enjoying it. And like you said with Owen Wilson, I would like from the first scene where like he's in the uh, like cathedral. Yeah. Like in France. Um, yeah. Right then and there, I was like, all right, he's awesome. Like mm-hmm. I'm on board with this character. Yeah. In... Mobius and Mobius. <laughs> <laughs> But no, he does a really great job because he kind of rides the line between like saying what the audience is thinking, mm-hmm. but being a fun, charismatic character on his own. Yeah. And like, I don't know. One thing that's really interesting to me was his um, relationship with Loki. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to say it's like father son, but it's more like stepfather and son. Where I, get, like, like, I got something a little different from him. Okay. I got. Is Mobius, would we classify him as like human? Uh, sure. I guess so. I didn't get that. I didn't, I don't get the vibe that they exactly. Anyway. Um, I think he's a very uh, 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 human character in both the best and the worst ways, right? I get what you're saying about it with the like the stepfather and son vibe. What I get from him more is somebody who's genuinely interested in this dude, but also he still has a job to do. Yeah. Right? So I feel like and it, and it, it is really a credit to Owen Wilson as an actor, right? Like, he, f- he finds Loki interesting, but at the same time, what he's doing is he's still performing a job. So it's kind of manipulative in a way. So That's what I got. Speaking of his job, um, what do you think about him hunting um, another Loki? I think that's dope as hell. Um, and there's been rumors going around that this is like a, a a woman version of Loki, like a female version. Um, and I'm I'm all for it. I can't wait to see exactly what route they go with that. What I'm more interested in is the timekeeper shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm way more interested in that because I feel like they're gonna end up being like a big bad kind of thing. Um mm-hmm. and I'm thinking this is gonna be like a, a a pathway to like Kang the Conqueror. I hope it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really hope it is. Yeah, like just from the fact that he was like, can I speak to them? And they're like, no, they're, they're busy doing time stuff. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? Doing the time stuff that he's told me to do. Yeah. Like, I don't trust him. I do not trust the TVA. Yeah. No, I, f- I feel like the TVA is, uh, Man, I feel like I feel like the timekeepers are going to wind up being a, a like the big bad of the series. Um, because so. it doesn't make sense, yeah. So like him leaving with the tesseract was like this giant red line, yeah. But like the Avengers doing what they did is and isn't like a- Cap staying in the 40s. And well, actually, did you see did you see the uh the Easter egg where? Uh, they had, uh, what was her name? Peggy Carter. They were bringing her through the TVA or somebody that looked just like her. Oh, no, I didn't see that. So there's, there's this theory circulating that Captain America was arrested. (laughs) Or Peggy Carter was arrested by the TVA. (laughs) <gasps> we're so gonna watch the painful that. reset scene as they like just have <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah i can actually i can totally see that yeah yeah right. yeah so but that, even that like and because at one point they were like even if like you're late to work or something like that but i just feel like thanos would have at least been contacted by them? Like at some point, unless it was supposed to happen. But if it's like, if you can justify that, like. 
then yeah, yeah shouldn't happy. shouldn't Loki's yeah shouldn't Loki's presence there be like like that was something that was supposed to happen? Which honestly, our conversation fits into the theme of the show because like they were talking about this, like how could you uh, say what's right and what's wrong? Right. Right. Like yeah, who decides what's right and what's wrong? I hope they get deeper into that. Um, because really, the timekeepers is like like being the being the big bads of this show. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm I'm really into that idea. And while we're on the subject of MCU, have you been hearing about Moon Knight? Um, in what way? Okay, so I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't give it that much of a shit about the Moon Knight show, but what I do give a shit about is that John Bernthal is coming back as the Punisher in that show. Is he? Yes. Hold yes. on. <laughs> yes. And I want him to, to be like the same like bleeding punisher <laughs> that he that he was in like Daredevil and in his own show in, in the Punisher. I think it's just a rumor right now. I thought it was confirmed. The well, only hard one finding is on me. Got this covered. I saw it somewhere. I think I think I saw it on like uh, CBR to comic book. Uh, well, it's possible because um, I feel I've heard they've confirmed uh, Matt Murdock is going to be yeah, and She Hulk yeah, as a She-Hulk lawyer and yeah, Spider-Man. yeah, yeah. Oh, and a Spider Man too. Oh no, I did see that. I did see mm-hmm. that. Because Charlie Cox was on set for that, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, Daredevil was great. I would be all for that. The Daredevil show was so good, man. I know, like, a lot of people, like, like talk shit on it, but I'm like, dude, this is, like... I was so mad when they canceled it. I was upset when they canceled Daredevil. Um, I feel like they could have done it better. Like, just the whole Netflix, um, like, series. What was your least favorite Netflix show? Iron Fist? Yeah. I think that was everybody's least favorite. About, like... Okay. If it's in that capacity, like, like yeah, like, Frank Castle killing, like, a bunch of mobsters or something, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, if it was something like that, I'd be perfectly fine with it. I like the idea of them being, like, like this is the shit you don't see mm-hmm. in the in the in the films. Like this this is like the like the the gritty grimy shit that like everyday people see, right? Like they have to deal with. Which I feel like Disney is trying to do, especially with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. And do you do you think they do you think they're gonna bring back Daredevil and Punisher for their own shows? I don't know about their own sh- shows. I feel like Daredevil, they, or at least I hope, I'm not saying I think that they will. Um, I feel like he'd be best served in a show where he's with somebody because I don't see like Disney just making a Punisher show on Disney Plus. Disney. That or give him his own movie. Well, then they're, they're going to be banking Deadpool, which is rated R, right? Yeah. John Bernthal can definitely carry his own Punisher movie. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's not even a question. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I don't think that, like, um, Charlie Cox could man a Daredevil movie that people would go and see. So I feel like he would have to be on the shows. Yeah. Or until a team up came up. You don't think Charlie Cox is a strong enough actor? No, I think he's an amazing actor. But I feel like they would if they heard a Daredevil movie was coming out with him, the initial reaction would be to go back like to the Ben Affleck one. And so I feel like there would be a certain like number of people who were like, I don't want to see a Daredevil. So you you don't think that like a enough time has passed since then and, and especially like with the 
because the Marvel Netflix shows, I think, were popular. Yeah. Right. You don't think people would see that and separate the Ben Affleck Daredevil from this Daredevil? I think that they would. But I also think that with the stacked like movies that's Marvel like Marvel's making, mm-hmm. that they have so many like new exper- like experiments and new people to bring in. I just don't see it ever happening where they would carve out space for him unless it was like several years later right like 2027 or 2029 or something like that i you know i i'm kind of i know i definitely want to see a john bernthal punisher movie Mm -hmm. i want that shit to be like just him killing mobsters from like beginning to end (laughs) And him getting shot and bleed like, oh, yeah. like you know how like the voice he does when he gets shot in every movie he's in, <laughs> like that. Like, <laughs> I just want John Bernthal to John Bernthal it up, you know, Dial and like, 100. yeah, yeah, it just like just just body like five hundred like main men, <laughs> and. <laughs> In like a two-hour film, <laughs> beginning to end, I I would pay good money to watch it. Yeah, yeah, that is like that would be a bomb. I don't want them to have a love interest, none of that. I just want body bags, like <laughs> um, <laughs> for two hours. So, so, what do you think of Fantastic Four? Um, whew, I'm honestly scared of that. <laughs> I honestly think. At this point, because the Fantastic Four would be better served as like at this point in the in, in the MCU as like side characters. The same way I feel like Doctor Strange should be served. Whenever there's like a a mystical problem that another superhero has, they call it Doctor Strange. Whenever there's like uh, something about the unknown or like some some shit that superheroes can't fathom or understand like something having to do with like science and space like that bring in the fantastic four i think they would be better served that way because it's clear to me when it comes to to shit like that like like when shit just starts to get weird and stuff like that Disney or Marvel just don't know how to handle that properly. They they don't know how to follow through with it. Yeah. They'll yeah. set it up. Yeah. Like Doctor Strange, the first one should have been a lot crazier than what it was. Like I thought it, half the movie was gonna be that like eye opening scene. Yeah. That's what I was hoping for. I was hoping for that, like yeah, for like most of the movie. Like, whenever they got into, like, the magic and shit like that, I'm, like, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be some shit that I, like, I can't even, like, I don't even know what I'm watching anymore. I wanted to go into Doctor Strange thinking, I don't know what I'm watching. And that's what kind of worries me about the Fantastic Four movie, because I think it's being made by um, John Watts, who's doing the Spider-Man movies. Uh Uh-huh. Which, he did a really good job with that. And I feel like that would transfer well to the Fantastic Four. Mm Mm-hmm. Certain elements about it, right? Yeah. Yeah, but but I also feel like I don't think he'll go as crazy as he could, and that's yeah, all I want. I, I just want scared. one Marvel project to just go for it. Yeah, yeah, like they're they're fucking scared too, and like the, like the Doctor Strange movie. When I first saw that eye opening scene, I'm like, yes, yes, this is what I came for. I want to see this the rest of the way. No. Mm-hmm. And it turned no. into like Inception with the buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think of Doctor Strange 2 with uh, like Sam Raimi? Didn't they say they were trying to? It, I felt a little better about it knowing that Sam Raimi was involved with the project. Yeah. Because I know Sam Raimi will go balls to the wall. This is still a Disney movie, though. Yeah, because our. I'm probably misremembering, but I think Scott Derrickson, the original director, wanted to go to like a much more horror route. Yeah. And Marvel Studios was like, no, like we're, 
we need you to, you know, there has to be a lot of other stuff happening. And he left and then Sam Raimi came on. And I love Sam Raimi. Yeah. But I also, because it's like him, there's another superhero in it. I forget who. But also, like, Wanda's going to be there. Wanda's going to be there, yeah. And I feel like continuing the story might make it. Is it Spider-Man going to be in there? Is that the other one? Um, Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man. Right, okay. Doctor Strange is going to be a Spider-Man. Spider-Man is not going to be a Doctor Strange. As far as we know. As far as we know. And we know very little. Yeah. Um, for the, how do you, like, with the Fantastic Four cast, do you feel any type of way about that? Like, is there someone... Has the cast been announced? No. You know, I was, I was chilling with Ron now just the other day. The guy, the names are escaping me right now. The, uh, the guy that played Ed in the Rain War. In what? In The Conjuring. Would they not make a great read and read Richards and Susan's story? Okay, yeah, I can see that. You can, you can see that, can't you? I can see it, but I also feel like they would probably go... Younger? Younger. Yeah. But they would be great, honestly. They would be amazing, right? Because, like, the, I don't know, like, uh, Sue and Reed have to have that chemistry. They do. Um, and they have that chemistry. Um, that same chemistry that I feel like you would need in Reed Richards and Susan Storm, they would have it. When Ronell said that, I was like, I agree, it's sad. Have you ever thought about uh, like Human Torch and the thing? <sighs> Joe Egerton is uh, the thing. Yeah. I just had to picture it. Human Torch, I haven't thought about as much. What about Doom? That John Hamm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. John Hamm. Uh, Or... I feel like you need somebody with a face to play a, a classic villain like that. You know? They just go older and bring in Michael Shannon. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I would be fine with that. I... You know who I still think is the best villain cast in the Marvel has ever done? Who? And and this 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 wasn't like uh the movie wasn't that popular. But um Hugo Weaving as Red Skull. You think so? That was the best to me. To me. Um I don't I wanna the only thing I didn't like about Red Skull is I wanted him to be more evil than what he was in that movie. Because Red Skull is supposed to be like the epitome like, of like of a, of, a, of a nasty Nazi motherfucker. I feel like they didn't, I feel like they played it safe with him kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish they had done more with that. That's just me. Hmm. I'm trying to think in terms of like casting, because I feel like let me pull up this thing. Um, I really want John Hamm as Doctor Doom now. That I'm thinking about. Um, I kind of want um Rob McElhenney. From It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia is Reed. Okay. Wow. Well, he's buff now, so he already has the Marvel body. 
but also uh, he has a very like sarcastic, dry sense of humor. Do we want to read Buff though? I feel like they're gonna make him Buff anyway. I hate that. I, I feel I like want, there's no way around it. I want Reed to be a fucking dork. Michael Sarah, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was still going to see him, Michael Sarah. Stretch my arm out. <laughs> <laughs> can you fucking imagine? Yo, he's like was... stretching his arm all the way across the room so he can put his arm around her. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens to Johnny and he doesn't want to get too close to her, but he wants to comfort her, so he reaches his arm all the way across. <laughs> Um, he's in the other room he just like brings his head in like are you mad at me <laughs> why is your Michael Cera voice so good <laughs> okay alright okay serious pitch okay following what you said Jesse Eisenberg is Reed is Reed he has dramatic acting chops, but he's also a complete, like, dork with his delivery. I can see it. I can and see it. Just... Yeah, I can see it. All right, if they did that, they could just bring, like... Is it Imogen or Im- Im- Imogen Poots? Imo- yeah, yeah, Imogen. Imogen. yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. I can see it as... Uh... Then who would be Johnny then? We're keeping Joel Egerton as uh as thing. as thing, right? Okay. Not, okay. John Hamm is still Yeah, John Hamm is Dr. Okay. Doom. Okay. Okay. I have a I have a okay, so I have a couple ideas for Johnny. Okay. Like different directions they could go with them. All right. Uh first of all. John David Washington, although I feel like if they got him, it would be for, like, the star of something. John David Washington, if they got him, he would be Reed. Yeah, okay. Which I'm also not against now that I'm thinking about it. Hey? John (laughs) John David Washington. Yeah. Why aren't we paying thousands of dollars to cast here? (laughs) (laughs) Um... I would for honestly for Johnny Storm. I feel like Zach Efron would be like the like best choice, but I would like suggest they went with like an unknown. I think Johnny Storm would be best played by unknown. Yeah, I could agree with that. But it's the guy, it's that guy from like one episode of Breaking Bad. What's his name? Blake Barris. I don't know. He, which, which, which episode was that? Uh, he was the uh, episode where Mike and uh, Jesse have to go get the money back. And so the guy walks out. Like, just, uh, can't speak. Jesse walks up and he's like, hey, can I buy some meth? And they're like, no. And then he started digging. And like one of the meth addicts came out. Send, like, me this, send, me, send me that. Send me that episode later. Okay. Because anyway, um, escaping. Yo, I mean, why play. don't I? Yo, yo, who? Yo, yo, what's my boy name? Who plays like uh, Gustavo Fring? What's his name? Uh, I, I know what you're talking about. I don't know his name. Why not him as Doctor Doom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Although I feel like after Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, he might take a break from like the mastermind villain trope since when you saw you saw him in uh the mandalorian didn't you yeah i don't know he was the, he was the mastermind villain in that he had a cape <laughs> <laughs> why is his name escaping me Giancarlo esposito is that it 
Yeah. Giancarlo Esposito was, would make a dope Dr. Doom. I think another person who'd make a good read would be Casey Affleck. Wow. Because he's imposing, but he's also like reserved. He's reserved too, and he he can play he can play the detached role really well. Yeah, I feel I feel like whoever plays Reed Richards has to be able to pull off that that detached like really into my work, kinda into my wife, like but mostly into my work. I can't <laughs> connect do. with anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he like he just doesn't connect well. Casey Affleck, I feel like can do that in like. Like, if it was Jesse Eisenberg, he would do it in a real quirky kind of way, right? Yeah. Like, <coughs> Casey Affleck will pull it off in a way more dramatic way, which I feel like Marvel m- w- might want to go for and for, like, you know, if they yeah, want to go a certain, like, you know what I'm saying? Because the Human Torch <clears throat> and the Thing are both, in some aspects, going to be a comedic element. Yeah. No. Yeah. If you're doing them well, they're going to be comedic. I still don't know who would play Johnny Storm. Like Johnny, the thing about Johnny Storm is Johnny Storm is such an easy character to do. So many people could do it. The yeah. rest of the members of the Fantastic Four require a much more like dramatic, you know, like mm-hmm. like take. You. It's it's easier to 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 put certain people in those roles, right? Easier and harder in a way. Johnny Storm. There's so many people that can do that. So it's harder because shoes, you know, like. She's a comedian. She was act like it doesn't matter. <laughs> ben Weishaw would be great, honestly. What was he in? Uh, he was Q in the James Bond movies. Oh, yes. Is Johnny Stone? Yeah. He would be great as Reed. <laughs> 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 You're bringing up so many people that would be a make a good read. Riches is crazy. <laughs> um, what did you think of Inside though? Oh goodness! Um, for as fucking funny as it was, I was actually sad after watching it. <laughs> yeah, I was sad after watching it, and I enjoyed it. Did you say it's a um, good dad or one of the ones you like question <laughs> life and everything? One of the ones why I question life. Because that whole special was him questioning life. On different levels. Yeah. Let like, from the moment um, that it started. Like, where he's just, like, there in the room, and then he turns on the light and hits the disco ball. That was the moment where I was, like, I'll be honest with you. At that moment, I thought I was going to hate it. Really? Yes. Okay. Because for a second, I thought that this was going to be another white apologist comedian, and I did not care to see it because all of that, to me, is performative, obviously. But, like, you know. The, the 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 white apology shit. I, I I've been seeing it for like years. I don't care to see it. You mean the more you like I'm a special kind of white guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, the more I watch it, I'm like, you know what? No, this isn't that. This isn't that. He's making fun of those types of people. <laughs> 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 and that made me like it more. And then the rest of his shit was just it was good, man. It was good. Um, I love that I can, part where he's doing the brands, like as a brand consultant. 
Yeah, yeah. Who are you, Bagel Bites? I like the part where he was doing the the uh, the, the review of, of him doing the review of him doing a review and he said like each level was just like deeper like him like <laughs> criticizing himself. <laughs> yeah, it was re- that was really good. Uh, what do you think? The white one. Uh, it was a clear Mick Foley reference, uh, but um. The Sako thing was the one I related to the most because it's all the shit that I believe is going on in the world. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> it's literally all the shit I believe is like wrong with the world right now coming out of the mouth of a fucking sock. You so, hurt. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that part was really good. The white woman's Instagram thing was the my favorite part. Uh... Man, I really enjoyed this shit. Uh, the end of that song where he's talking about uh, every uh, experience, everything, and what, 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 what were the words? Um, um, would you um, like a bit of everything all of the time? Uh, yes, like a bit of everything all the time. I really like that. that was it was haunting. It, it was haunting. Yeah. That to me was haunting. Especially when it came back. And yeah. It was all sped up. Yeah. I feel like a carousel ride. That was like yeah. That. Yeah, man. How I, I was... really, I really ended up enjoying. I thought I was gonna hate it in the beginning because he's this real goofy looking white dude. I'm like, okay. You're like like normally right. that. I know. Yeah, normally that type of comedy doesn't do it for me, mm-hmm. but the, I gave it a chance, and I'm happy I did. Um. How did you feel about his turning 30? Like, set with, like, him in front of the clock and then it's switching into that song. That was oh, one of the highlights for me. Yeah, yeah. I loved how he had, like, the, uh, uh, like the light on his phone turned on, like, on his back. Yeah. And then he was, like, hit it yeah. up. That was... sad. Mm-hmm. But it was so, like I I got a real that that was some lonely shit. Yeah, the whole thing was some lonely shit. Hundred percent. I never felt more alone. Like I never <laughs> felt more lonely watching another motherfucker make fun of his own loneliness than this dude. I um, felt lonely watching it. I'm laughing. I'm like, ah, oh, this is so relatable. <laughs> like I think the best part, like the part that exemplifies that the most would be like the All Eyes on Me song. Mm-hmm. Where it start like, it's like atmospheric. Yeah. And then he has like him like on the projector behind him. Yeah. And like, then there's that moment where he just like grabs the camera and yeah. like brings you up with him and you're like, oh shit. Yeah. He's lost it. Yeah, man. All right. Now that was another, that was another good suggestion by you. It was, it was, it was really good. It was really good. And I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on it. I don't hear too many people talking about it. I think it's because it's a hard sell. Because your instinct wants to say it's a comedy special. Yeah. But if someone goes in there expecting to laugh, they're going to leave heartbroken. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Um, a part that I also felt was when he actually left, he left the house and like the, the, the audience is like laughing and shit. And he just wants to go back inside. That's how I feel about this pandemic ending. How so? Everyone's so fucking happy about this ending, right? Like, oh, we get to return to real life. You know, like, so we won't have to wear these masks anymore. Ooh. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck was so great about real life before this shit started? What was so great? Yeah, you get to see all your friends and shit like that. I get it. But like, y'all don't remember. We was just complaining about that. I feel like people are just not we were we were just 
we would just complain about how like like what the world was before this. We were complaining during the pandemic, saying that, yo, the world is fucked up. Why would we ever want to go back to that? And now that it's coming back, people are acting like it's all good. People are acting like they weren't just complaining about it. Do you think it's going to be a disappointing summer for a lot of people? I think people are going to go out. They're going to fuck. They're going to do all the shit that they wanted to do. By the time fall hits, they're going to be like, man. I'm still lonely. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody realizes, like, We were better off at home. This whole time. This whole time, my G. Um, Ain't that fucking sad, yo? We were better off. We were better off. We were better off with the streets empty. And now we're just supposed to go back out there. Not and 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 now we go back out there to the same shit that we were just complaining to each other about. We're doing this willingly and smiling and shit. Because it's new. Yeah, but really it's the same old shit. It's the same old shit. I've been at my saddest during the pandemic, but you know what else? I've been at my fucking happiest as well. Same, honestly. I've experienced the lowest of the lows and the highest of the highs during it. And the has made that whole shit worth it. Now we're back to the same old, same old. That's that's sad to me. I don't know. Well, maybe it's our second chance, right? Like yeah. before we hated it, before there was shit that we didn't want to do. We got locked at home, found out we still had to do it. And now we can approach the world again with a different, like, strategy. You think so? I mean, I... We hope so, right? I I choose to believe that. Yeah, yeah. Choose to believe that. We we hope so, right? But... I ain't gonna get into it. No camera. No camera. What's your problem with Keith Cuddy? I've been hearing people like praise Kid Cudi for years, yeah. right? Okay. And I have listened to Kid Cudi looking for all of the shit that other people saw in Kid Cudi. I don't see shit, my dude. Well, what do this... you A nigga that hum a whole lot. I I can't I can't deny that. Um, a nigga that hum a whole lot. I don't see shit else. He hums really well. He sounds really good humming. Um, and look, this is I'm 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 not trying to say that he's talentless. I'm saying I don't see what everybody else sees. You think he's overhyped? Yes, highly. I don't know how a nigga like that got got to the point where he's at. Um, I really think it was his first two, like Man on the Moon albums, because they were catchy. They were like talking about sadness. Granted, mm-hmm. and a dude who smoked a lot of weed. Those three markets came together. They were like, this is good. And then as his career progressed, he made, let's call it, interesting creative decisions. Like humming everything or whatever that speeding bullet to heaven album was. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't know. I, I like him. I, I 
I think it's just one of those things where, like, I listened to him when I was younger. So now he holds, like, a place. I don't know. What's your guilt, who, who's your guilty art? Like, I feel that way about Kanye West. Okay. I think that there are moments or albums, like, as a whole, the stuff he puts out is good. But I don't think it's like the God level that like his biggest fans think it is or he no. thinks it is. No. After after my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, to me, that was his last great thing he did. Like I think he's made stuff since then that is great. Life of Pablo wasn't bad. Life of Pablo wasn't bad. The, but um, if, if if we're talking about like like certified classics like mm -hmm, cohesive albums yeah my beautiful dark twisted fantasy was the last one that was the last one that was in 2011 12 somewhere around there yeah it was a long ass time ago he ain't did one of those since. You could. You, some people might argue Jesus. I disagree with that. What? Jesus is not good. Um, no, I, I said so, I wouldn't argue that. But some people might. I, I didn't like Jesus. Look, it's okay to be wrong. But what we have to. So, <laughs> 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 like, what we have to remember is the album itself. His lyric, like a lot of his lyrics were nonsense. Yeah. And the songs were like out of place and a little grungier, which was, which was fun and like what was interesting, but it didn't. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. Uh, Bound Two is like a weird. It's a weird ass song. Yeah. Yeah, Bound Two is definitely weird. Um. Yeah, Jesus wasn't. I'm in it. it. Like he made that. Like he he went to his studio, <laughs> recorded "I'm in it," and said, "This is good." I don't know why people. Like Kanye West, to, like to me, I like I, Kanye West will always hold, hold a spot in my heart, you know. Yeah. yeah. But the shit he doing now, like we'll never get a, another my beautiful dark twisted fantasy because that nigga, that nigga's living in a dark twisted fantasy, and we'll never get the best from him ever again. You know what my favorite thing he's done. What's that? Divorce Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yeah. That's my favorite thing. That's his magnum opus to me. <laughs> or did she divorce him? Whatever. They're getting divorced. That was my favorite thing. I don't know. And I, I and yeah, and as you've seen, I'm not a big proponent of divorce, but that one, that one there. Yeah. Like, it never really felt real, but at the same time, it was exactly what I expected. Like, just the marriage. The marriage? Yeah. 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 Nah, you're right. When it very first happened, I thought, oh, this is a publicity stunt. This isn't going to last long. <laughs> Boy, was that wrong. <laughs> Boy, was I wrong. Oh. My favorite lyric, I, I think it was on The Life of Pablo, where he was talking about Ray J, and he was just like, yeah, Maddie hit it first. He was like, why'd you say that? You don't have to say that, Kanye. You could have kept that to yourself. I hit it first as a classic. <laughs> Ray J doesn't get enough credit. 
I hit it first as a, as a like a certified. That dude's wild. But anyway, do we want to wrap it up here? That works for me. All right. Okay, so can we talk about how great uh, how great Ray J is the next episode? Yeah, um, I'll do my research. We can <laughs> Okay. We'll do it with Andito. Just okay. not tell him. And just be like, all right. Oh no, and Dino will be on board for the Ray J conversation. Trust me. Okay. All right. Trust I have to me. do my research then. Do your research. Do okay. your research. He's he'll be on board for the Ray J conversation. Cool. All right, but yeah, the next podcast we'll have him on it. All righty. I'm excited. This is gonna be fun. We're yeah, expanding. this is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot of fun. But until then, I will say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Yes. Uh, have a great day. All right. Great night. Well, whatever. Have a great whenever you're watching this. Yes. <laughs> That's a Craig Ferguson joke. That's not mine. As soon as I did that, I was like, I can't take credit for that. You can't take credit for it, yeah. All right. Uh, okay. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day. All right. Yeah.